great to have you on today's show. Now, rental properties has a great and consistent source of income, but also is a bit challenging, especially when you think about payment options and such constraints that come with these matters. So where do you get the help? That's what we're talking about today. We look at property management and what it all entails. That'll be later on in the show. But for now, let's have a look at what we have on our Property of the Week segment. Located in the scenic environment of Matasia along Gong Kesarian Road is Namanisho Park, a gated development of beautifully landscaped lawns surrounded by a spectacular panoramic view of Ngong Hills. The development consists of 21 four-bedroom modern serene townhouses with a concept of community environment in the outskirts of the busy city estates. It is approximately 600 meters off the main road. Each house unit sits on 276 square meters of land with parking slots for two vehicles and an external detached servants quarter which is self-contained. A 2.1 meter boundary wall surrounds the entire development and is built with electric fencing. The garden has a cabro paved driveway and a jogging track. All units have underroof and underground reserve water tanks backing up the county council water supply. A 60-meter deep borehole has been dug to serve fresh water in all units. A still door opens up to the living room and kitchen area. The kitchen has a separate entrance from outside the house and two separate inlets from inside. The living area offers a simple look and with its large windows, there is enough natural light streaming in. Several TV ports and sockets adorn the walls. The kitchen is a semi-open floor plan that opens up to the dining area. It has enough storage with more than 15 soft opening MDF cabinets and pull-out drawers. A six burner cooker can easily fit as the kitchen exhibits spaciousness for all necessary kitchen appliances. The living room is spacious and has wall bracket lighting. A hallway right next to the living area leads to the guest room with twin MDF wardrobes and pull-out drawers, as well as a separate toilet and bath. All wet area floors are done in ceramic tiles. A huge bay window on the staircase brings in an excellent amount of natural light. The staircase leads to three rooms, inclusive of the master bedroom. The first bedroom has ample floor-to-ceiling MDF wardrobes for all your storage needs. It has wall bracket lighting, ample TV ports and sockets, and a big window to let in natural light. The second bedroom is similar with the signature floor-to-ceiling MDF twin wardrobes, sockets and TV ports. Both rooms have a beautifully designed common bathroom with a pedestal sink and still fixtures.
The master bedroom is bigger and has twin wardrobes and cabinets as well as a separate wardrobe for towels. It is graced with a different floor tiling than the entire house and has the signature big window which is beautifully centered and brings in maximum natural light. The bathroom has ceramic tiles and a separate bathtub and shower. In case of power outage, there is backup generator in place. Each unit has solar panels for heating water. A waste water treatment plant is in place. The recycled water will be used for sprinkling water on the gardens. There is optimal 24-hour security by the Gillies Security Company. Garbage disposal has been taken into prime consideration to maintain the hygienic standards. There is a common garbage disposal area for all houses. Namanesha Park, being by the foot of the spectacular Ngong Hills, gives you a true sense of urban country fusion. The development has close proximity to both Ngong and Kisarian town centres and social amenities such as the all-new Milale Mall, Memusi Academy, Amazing Grace Church, St. Barnabas Catholic Church, St. Joan Primary School, Inorero University and the well-known Olipolo's getaway. The housing unit is listed at 10.5 million shillings. Floating candles can be used just about anywhere, be it a party, a gathering or even a dinner, you can put up your floating candle and that's what we show you how to do on our Property Essential segment. There's something magical about fire dancing in water and it creates the mood for just about anything. Floating candles are the best and you can light up your casual evening table and today we will show you how to follow three simple steps and get your floating candles. All you need is cooking oil, glasses of water filled halfway with water, votive candles which are the best for floating candles, and a matchbox to light it up. So the three simple steps are this, make sure your glasses are filled halfway with water, right about that, and then now you take your cooking oil and cover the surface of the water. You can now take your votive candles and just place them on top. And now time to light it up. Floating candles can also be used as a centerpiece and you can add orchids, roses or lilies that can either be used as whole flowers or as petals.
it is also recommended that additional deco is added to your centerpieces. This could be pebbles, seashells or even fresh leaves. Why do we need centerpieces anyway? Well, first of all, we don't want to put an empty center table in front of your guests, right? We want them to feel at home and to feel the warmth of your home as well. Floating candles customized in many different ways are among the most creative centerpieces that you could ever have. Not only is it used for design, but it also adds to the warmth of your home, most especially your living room. With candle centerpieces, there is a mixture of design and functionality. You can even just have a giant white candle and design it by yourself according to how you want it to look like. Remember that you have the option to use scented or unscented candles. Scented candles are best but are usually more expensive than the ordinary ones. And just in case you're looking for wedding decor, these candle wedding centerpieces are timeless, classy and oh so pretty with an old timey vibe that can be revamped for a modern feel. These warm glowing decorations offer elegance, allure and beauty to any tablescape. Whether pillars, tapers, votives or tea lights, there's nothing like a flickering flame to give your wedding reception beautiful ambience. Plus, they have the added benefit of casting a romantic glow on your loved one's face, meaning you're more likely to get pretty wedding photos. No matter your theme, style or scheme, there's a candlelit option that will have you glowing with excitement. We take a short commercial break, but we have so much lined up for you right after this. Welcome back to the show. Today we want to demystify property management and just how it benefits you as a landlord, a tenant or even a developer. With us is Dennis Mbogwa from Estrage Properties. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. For really appreciate. Now, many people who are watching us today may be wondering, what is property management? Can you please tell us? Um, our sole mission is to um, get the needs of the, our landlords. Uh, with a special tailored um, services and designed that will free their, their, their obligations uh, from property management. That is, um, we want to take away the headaches, the hassles and the bustles that come in with, the, uh, with managing the proper, their properties on their behalf. So at the same time, also maximizing their returns and also minimizing on their expenses. So for one, we, 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 we do the property uh, maintenance as well. There's also marketing part of it. There's also the tenancy relations whereby you, 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 there's a process of um, how you qualify the tenants who are coming to, to stay in at these properties. And then again, we, there's also financial management whereby you have to keep to tabs with, um, with how people are paying or the, the clients or the tenants, they are paying their rent, and also the expenses that come with the maintenance, the repairs and damages here and there. All right, how frequently do you interact with your clients? Um, we have to make uh, contact with them uh, on regular basis. For one, the landlords need to feel that they are in touch with what is happening on the ground. 
and definitely that's one client. Remember here we got two clients. The one client and the, and the tenant. The tenant is the one who actually pays us and also pays, um, enables the, the landlord to have his income. So he ha we have to have a special attention towards them. And our relation is on a daily basis, if at all, if it's possible, especially if they have got issues. They have to, we have to be a phone away from them and able to respond to their, to their issues that are arising now and then. So because you, you interact with two types of clients, you interact with landlords and you interact with tenants, and they're both on two different divides. So so how are you able to strike that balance? Um, the landlords, as much as they are part of our clients, we hardly have um, a contact with them as, as often as it, uh, as it were for the tenant. Because the landlords, if their job is done and we have signed a contract with them and everything is, uh, their, their property is well managed, uh, definitely the only time we have contact with them is at the end of the month when we're doing returns they want to see how much has been paid to the account if there are any issues or any um, expenses that their property managers incurred during the month for the tenant we have to definitely make them comfortable first your main because they are our main clients at the end of the day they are the ones who pay us and obviously they want to bring the income to the landlord so definitely we have to make sure that their, their stay with us is very comfortable mm -hmm. at any one time they have got issues they, we are a phone away from them so definitely when they're coming to occupy one of our buildings we definitely give them and vanish them with uh, enough information on how to go about getting in touch with us on any one time 24 7. Tell us a major achievement uh, within the three years in property management for you. All right. Yeah. As I said from the beginning, we started very, very small with about five houses. Later on, as we went on, and uh, definitely with marketing, because marketing is one of the backbones of property management. If you don't get it, get it correctly in the marketing area, then you're going to lose out. Then again, integrity, you need to have to be someone or a company of integrity, because definitely the way you um, relate with your clients, who is the landlord, and again with the tenants, will also be a good point of reference to other, um, other developers, or other landlords, who eventually they'll get to know about you and hear about of your good services. So definitely, as time went along, and being, just being patient, uh, definitely I got a lot of referral for our good, uh, good job done. And uh, thereby, we, we, our, our portfolio kept on um, growing bigger and bigger from leaps to bounds. Great, um, because you deal a lot with tenants and, and there are many options of paying for houses. I'd like you to tell us well, what options are there and, and what are the best ones? What, what do you, have you seen that people prefer? After getting feedback from a lot of them, we have seen that most of them, because of the hassle and bustle, they're so busy, they're very busy. Because most of them might not be uh, on an eight to five job. They are out there in the business doing Jua Kali. So for them, what is uh, convenient is probably going to pay through the, uh, the agent. With that kind of payment, we know many cases where people have masqueraded as agents and they've conned people their money in terms of paying house rent. What's the best way to go about such cases? I want to say for tenants and as well as also for developers, for the landlords, they have to be careful. They have to do a thorough uh, background on some of the agents to find out whether they're credible and to find out where their, their history. Uh, possibly, there's so many platforms nowadays we have. You have, you have uh, Google, you have... Uh, um, Facebook, just to find out more on the agents that you want to interact or you want to be your property managers. I'm starting with the landlord for, for that matter. So definitely they have to find if they're credible. Visit their offices, find out how many staff do they have on board to be able to uh, do, uh, give you the service kind, the service that you want. So definitely uh, at the end of the day is about finding, uh, doing your own investigation and uh, whether the property managers are credible. For the tenants, as they go out there to look for houses, yes. remember today's tenant is not like yesterday tenants. The yesterday's tenants were going to an agent and just telling them, I want a house in a certain location and that's it. Today's tenant is more uh, savvy in, in a way that he go, they go out personal, personally to the various uh, buildings in whatever location they want because definitely today's tenant is want to see their value for their money. 
and definitely they're looking for uh, unique construction, unique features in, in, in every building. So definitely for them, uh, they, they already have done um, their own um, research on the ground, as opposed to before the agents or the ones who will be doing for them. And then once they have identified the kind of house they want, definitely they have to make sure they get the right contact on from the site. Uh, probably they'll find um, a marketing banner or uh, what have you, or a caretaker on, on site, so they can ask, where do I pay my rent? Is there a property manager? Is it I'm paying to the landlord? Yeah. And if they know they're going to pay to the property manager, they have to come to visit our offices to just to verify or even confirm, really, are you the property managers of a certain building? That so there are many ways that, that one can use Definitely. to make sure that they have thorough background Absolutely. on, on the agent. Absolutely. When we move forward, what's the future uh, of property management, in your opinion? Definitely is going is a big time thing. It's a big time property because left, right and center you can see buildings coming up. And definitely today's tenant, they are out there looking for quality uh, construction. Um, and and uh, the, the goodness with Kenyans, they, they, they have woken up to that call. You can see the, the, the developers are digging deeper to their pockets to make sure that they give, um, at the end of the day, a good construction of a building with nice features, with nice setups, with spacing. So today, I, I look at it that we re the property managers have to really, and the developers, have to work hand in hand. And for sure, the developer cannot do without the property manager because that's where the mistake comes in. Because uh, we, they need us as well to advise them. What is, the, what is the expectation of the tenants? Some of them just go building houses blindly without knowing um, uh, or ill-advised uh, by the constructors. But definitely property management is a big time business. And, uh, so it's a chain, a developer needs a property manager, property manager needs developers. Definitely, well. definitely. And one more thing that I would want to say, the developers need to have qualified professionals. Um, as opposed to some of them, they don't want to use their money to employ because they need the structural engineer, they need the architects to be on, on site now and then to make sure that everything is going up uh, to plan. Uh, but you'll find some of them, they will want to do away with both of them and just employ a mason uh, to be the, or, or a fundi to be the one who's going to take the general, um, uh, to be more or less like the project manager of the, of the, of the building. And it, it ends up not doing very, I mean, uh, coming out as it ought to be. So it's always good to have professionals in, uh, in this kind of industry. Okay. Your final words to our viewers watching. Well, my final words is, uh, kindly, um, as you go out to, to, to source for a house, make sure that um, you, everything, you, you found the correct house and to make sure that everything is working um, according to your expectations. That the rent that you have paid, that you have so hard, I mean, that most of them have worked hard for it, that it is worth where you're getting. And uh, make sure that um, all the documents that are binding you between you, the property managers and the tenants, are uh, specifically um, um, uh, well, well self-explanatory that you understand properly what you're engaging yourselves is. Don't stay in any apartment or any uh, house without having a proper uh, documentation of, um, of, 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 of a contract that you would understand. Um, because most many times we have seen t tenants blindly signing tenancy agreement without having to read the clauses. Only for them later on when they are moving out, they have been told, didn't you see this and that? Uh, and it becomes um, a tug of war on, on that. So definitely they have to be very careful on that. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank we you really appreciate. Me. Now you know all about professional property management and all the services that are offered in property management just in case you need to find yourself one. That's all the time we had. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you've learned quite a great deal. If you have topic ideas that you would like us to cover, talk to us on our social media platform on Facebook, NTV Property Show and on Twitter at NTV Property Show. You can also call us. Our number is 0719 03 We'll see you next Sunday.